Hi, this is David Valade with AltaVista Technology. We're going to look at a big topic today, a really powerful part of Sage Intact, and that is the contracts module. I find that contracts is a daunting thing to show in a presentation such as this, because there's just so much to it. So I'm going to try to walk the fine line between showing the power that exists within the contracts module without getting terribly lost in the details. All right, so here we see uh, I have an environment here. I have my contracts area of the system, and we can see a lot of nice, easy navigation if we want to use this interface for working with the system. If that looks a little overly simplistic, uh, rest assured there is a fair bit of other <laughs> functionality that we have for the taking uh, that we'll touch on here momentarily. Let's take a look at our contracts, though, just to start. All right, and I have a contract I wanted to look at that I've pre-built, and uh, my customer was Dave Co. I believe. There it is, Dave Co. Management Services. So before I even go in, let's take a look at what we have here. I have a list of contracts, and again, this could be, I, I could have views, so I could have subsets. I can have different types of contracts. I can report on them all differently, and I could see dollar amounts and, and so on and so on. There's an import button up above and I can delete contracts. We'll talk more about that as we go. And I only have the one contract here that meets my search criteria. So I'm going to hit edit and go into that contract. Okay, so the contract is basically a container that holds all sorts of things. It can hold contract lines for different sorts of billing events. It can hold uh, different sorts of uh, revenue recognition schedules. It can even track expenses. But let's take a look. Here's the contract right there. I have that. It says Dave Co. three-year contract. It's in process. I can see there's a dollar amount. Nice dollar amount. And as of this moment that I'm looking at it, nothing's been billed, nothing's been received. And since nothing's been billed, I have nothing outstanding. And just to confirm that, if I go to the billing transactions history, I can see, in fact, that is true. I love this little bit of it. So if you think about that, having one spot that you can go to on a contract and see all the transaction history, all the journal entries, everything associated with a contract all in one spot, oh, wow, that makes things a lot easier to manage. I won't touch on it much in this video, but know that there's all sorts of actions that we can have. So if you find yourself doing things in your real life management of contracts that have to do with MEA or putting contracts on hold or canceling canceling contracts or perhaps renewing contracts from prior periods. Know that that's all here. Probably a little beyond what I can touch on all in one video, but wow, there's a lot of good, good functionality there as well. I'll scroll down here. I can see the dates here. So it looks like this one is a three-year contract, uh, which is cleverly alluded to in the title of the contract. I have some usage billing price lists and some other price lists associated with it. I could have an attachment. In this case, I don't. And I have lots of dimensions. Dimensions are one of those things that we've talked about in other videos where we can have the ability to do all sorts of reporting on a certain aspect of our chart of accounts. So for example, I can do a report on the profitability for any location or department, or in this case, segment or channel, or if I were using a project on this contract, even project or vendor, customer, item, <laughs> any of those other things. All right, so those dimensions look good to me. I have multi-currency here. This one's in US dollars. And here's the, the heart of it here. I love the contract lines. There's an add button here. So any contract you have could be made up of many, many contract lines. It doesn't have to be complicated or hard. I, I could always uh, hit the duplicate button to duplicate a contract or any line on a contract. So it is pretty forgiving and pretty flexible to set things up. I can see some items on here. So let's take a look maybe at this top one here. Even before I do that though, I can see there's some different dates here. So I can see that uh, even before I go into the contract lines, I can see it's made up of three different um, types of things and there's different date ranges. It looks like this last thing, the platform pack, it looks like this one was added after the fact, a few days after the start of the contract, but fortunately it ends in line with the contract, which is good. And you can see that's an add-on type of change. So let's go into that top line, like I said a moment ago, and I'll make that a little bigger. Again, there's that duplicate button to make transaction entry a lot easier. And I can see here, this is uh, probably the simplest type of line. I can see it's a dollar amount, $135,000. It's for one item. And remember, item is a dimension. So I could report on this as I have these different types of contract events over many customers to see profitability on them. You can see the date range. It's all good. And I can see, again, what I said earlier, a contract line really has three parts of it, or up to three. In this case, I have billing. So what is the billing? Well, this is nice and easy. I have a monthly uh, billing 
template for three years, and it's a fixed price amount. And if I hit the little drop down just to show what it could have been, in this case, it is a fixed price, but I could also have quantity based. So quantity based is one of those types of things where you have gigabytes and downloads and clicks and or events where some number of things happen and that drives your billing. It could also have project time and materials, or if I had projects, it could be even a milestone type of thing. Okay, well, that's a fixed price. That's great. And as I said before, that was monthly. So I might be thinking, if I scroll down a little bit here, there's a quantity of three, so that's three years times $45,000. And I can do some other little calculations here to get me to a $135,000 contract, three-year contract worth 135 grand. But if I wanted to see, well, what does that look like monthly? Maybe my customer is uh, talking to me or I'm talking with my salesperson. I can click the little view schedule choice here and I can scroll down and I could see, well, if you were to do the math, that's $3,750 every month for three years to get to that total. All right, now if I scroll down, the rest of this contract line, and I'm really at the bottom here, this is it. The rest has to do with stuff that's in the back of the house. So here I have an ASC 605 revenue section, an ASC 606 revenue section, and elsewhere I could have expenses. I don't have to have the 605 that only applies to certain organizations. There's a checkbox setting where I could turn that off if I didn't need that, but we have it all turned on here just to show off a little bit. What I get to do is I can pick the template for how I will recognize revenue. And just to be a little bit clever, I've picked different types of revenue recognition. For example, on the ASC 605 side, it's a drop down and note the add button. So I get to add the rules for how I want to recognize revenue. So in this case, I have a three-year contract and I can hit the little uh, view schedule. Before I do that, I just want to take a look at what it says here. It's a straight line for full periods. So what I expect to see is the same amount every month. And let me take a look. If I scroll down, in fact, I do. Same amount every month. That's looking great. So that's again, back of the house. That's my revenue recognition for 605 purposes. ASC 606 purposes though, I have a different type of template picked, I have daily based on the number of days in the month. Similar, but it is different. And if I hit the little schedule button here, I can see that in fact, oh yeah, look at that base amounts here. I have different amounts here for every month that in fact is in line with the number of days every month. And I even have, if I wanna scroll over to the side here, a daily rate to a preposterous number of decimal places showing how we arrived at that amount. And then the final parts down below are just, again, some of those dimensions that I can see just to keep track of this so I can report on this contract line. So while there is a lot of sophistication here, you can see that it's really not that hard. This is really meant to be very easy to administer, very easy to read, and very simple to use in a fast-paced organization. I'm just so used to Intact that I, I maybe don't give it enough of a, a focus on these videos. What's really happening here is amazing. We're billing the customer at one cadence. Maybe that's a monthly type of thing. Maybe it's, I'm billing annually. Maybe I'm billing every quarter or every month or any number of ways that I might have set up. I get to define that. So I might be billing things out in one cadence recognizing revenue in two other cadences and being able to report on them. That's just part of the nature of Intact being a multi-book, multi-ledger system. I can report on 605 or 606 or my gap or, or any combination thereof. I'll hit cancel on that and that's good to see it. And then I've touched on some of these other points here, but the gigabytes, again, that's volume based. So in this case, I set it up as having a, a fixed component, but then also having another component that's based on quantity in this case. And then again, I have that platform pack. That's something else that's an add on. I also added expenses. In this case, it looks like I added some commission. It could be any expense though. And same type of thing. I'm recognizing the expense over the life of the contract. You can see the dates there. And I could hit the little schedule here and see the expenses. In this case, I have a straight line for 605 purposes, just much like I did on revenue. I'll get rid of that. And 606, I can see the schedule there. So that's a contract. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna just copy this and I'm gonna show a couple more things here. So if I copy that contract, let's actually use it. So I'll hit save on my contract and I'll show two common events related to that. So first is obviously generating invoices. So I haven't done any invoicing yet. I'm going to go into that generate invoices option and I can come into the screen and I can generate invoices for all of my contracts or a subset. So what I'll do here is I'll scroll down here and I just wanna point at a few things. 
Uh, one is under the filters area. I can filter so I can run for just one contract and I'll just paste in that contract number I had um, at the start here. There's my Dave Co. three-year contract. I'll just limit it to that so we don't have a lot of other clutter on the screen. But you could set up contract types or currencies or projects or project managers or so on and so on. And you can even make a filter set. So if you had certain types of customers, maybe you have a certain population of your customers that you invoice together and do billing for another set separately, you could build all the rules, the filters that you want, and save it off so that it's easy to pull up and run later. But I'll just do that one, one particular contract and I'll leave it there. So I'm gonna hit my preview. Let's see what we get. All right, if I scroll to the bottom, I can see I have one customer for $15,333.32. That's what I'm going to bill out. Again, I limited it to just the one contract. In real life, if you had a billing clerk, they don't need to filter it actually, I should mention that. Someone could just come along and click the generate invoices and off they go. I'm taking the long way just to point out some things as we go. Now, if I were to do this and preview and see that I had this contract ready to be billed out, I might be curious and I might ask, well, what's that for? Uh, these are all clickable links, of course. So I can click on that dollar amount, 15,333. I can make that a little bigger. And if I scroll down here, I can see, oh, okay. Well, I picked a date in December to do my billing, but I never did my November billing. The system knows that. So it knows that I need to bill out some of my gigabytes. Remember I had some recurring amounts. I didn't look at that in much detail, but I do see contract line one. There's my machine learning core. Oh, there's the 3750. Yep. Sure enough, I can see that. That's a number that I remember from prior. And I can see some of the other things. Again, this is doing two months because that's what was supposed to happen. Down below for usage, I didn't have any activity. So that could have happened if I had any of those gigabytes downloaded. In this example, I didn't. So there won't be any. Timesheet entries, none. Expenses, none. AP, billable, no. <laughs> Purchasing, no. I have all this enabled just that it could be used. If I had some of these deselected, the screen would be a little less complicated. But this is a hint at all the things that can happen here. And as a user here, if there were anything here that I didn't want to bill out just yet, I could deselect it and that's fine. I'll cancel it, I'll leave that window there. And I'll go ahead and generate my invoice. I have a view invoice run little button that pops up and the re this is gonna be a little bit boring, but what I can do here is see all the different invoices that were made. In this case, just the one invoice like we discussed before. But the reason why there's an invoice run and the reason why this is set up this way is because it is built to scale. I could have hundreds or thousands of invoices that just got made and are all ready to go. And I've done this in other videos. Uh, I can send them out in mass too. So with a handful of clicks, I could send out all my invoices via email or print them out or uh, some combination of those two events to get them to my customers quickly. But what about RevRec? That's interesting. What about that? Well, that's another thing I can do. I'll go into the manage schedules here to go ahead and book my revenue recognition. But before I do that, I just wanna point at something. If I go into the setup here and I look at the templates that I can have for recognizing my revenue, I just wanna point at this column here, default posting type. I have most of these types of revenue recognition schedules set up to be manual, but I could have them be automatic as well. So the step that I'm about to take right now is where I'm going to go ahead and post my revenue recognition, but I don't even have to do that. I could even, I could have everything set up to automatically post itself if I'm so inclined. But since I have most of my schedules here set up as manual deliberately, I will come in and manage my schedules and I will post. And again, I'll limit that just for ease of uh, clarity here. I'll say, let me just post the three-year contract that I had a moment ago. And I'll just do the 605 for revenue and expense. And let's preview, uh, and again, that's uh, through December here. Let's preview what it would have done. And I can see it has booked revenue recognition for a few different contract lines. And it broke it down for the revenue and then also the expense as well. These are all clickable links yet again, so I can see everything there. And I even have that one, um, this last contract line here is a prorate part where I could have it uh, be staggered, be weighted differently. That's my 605. I will toggle over to 606 and I'll compare the two, right? And that top line did change uh, just slightly. Because this contract line for 606 is set to be based on the number of days. So maybe a good place to go from here is, let's go right back to where we started. I'm gonna go back to my contracts and I'll pick my uh, Dave Co. And I'll go back into that contract. And you'll notice it's changed a little bit now. 
I can still see the contract total and there's that billing amount now because I've done my billing. And if I go into my transaction history, I can see there's that invoice number. So I can drill in on that and take a look at what was there. I can look at my journal balances. So I can see what's been deferred revenue for 605 and for 606. I can see the transaction history for 605 and 606. And everything on this window here, all the blue that you see, these are all clickable things. So this tells me that I can even drill in to see more. Stay tuned as we come out with more content. This is something that we want to come back to more and more. There's so much more we could talk about. Thanks for watching.